shower you with coconut cream pies. Yeah, that'll work. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of This Got Made, a show where we look at the strangest pieces of media I can find, and today we're going to be looking at something a bit more famous, the Donkey Kong Country cartoon show. I'm also using a different mic setup than I tend to, so if the audio sounds different, that's why. Just let me know if it's better or worse in the comments. Thanks, y'all! Now anyway, back to... Coconut cream. That. Originally premiering on October 17th, 1997, Donkey Kong Country was a French animated show based on the games made by Rare. To match the art style of the games, they went with 3D models instead of traditional 2D animation. They even went as far as to use motion capture, which helped add to the show's, uh... unique look? Well, today this seems like the status quo. Back then, it was a big deal, especially when they submitted it to the Emmys and were told by the TV Academy... Motion capture doesn't involve the same artistic input and choreography as traditional animation. So now you're probably asking yourself, Leo, this was good enough to submit for an Emmy. Why are you covering it on this show? And it's because Donkey Kong Country is fucking bananas! Even if the leaps of technological progress the show was using was outstanding at the time, the content itself makes it one of the strangest things imaginable. The way I found this show was through a VHS tape I would rent from Blockbuster as a kid, called Donkey Kong Country Legend of the Crystal Coconut. Even though it says feature-length adventure, it's actually four episodes of the TV show strung together very loosely to try and tell one story. What better way to get a taste of what the show has to offer than watching this feature-length movie? So. Let's see what Legend of the Crystal Coconut has in store for us. Hey, I can see my reflection! Got any banana cream pie? When are you two Tell me when they're gone! So, uh, these are our main characters, Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, and Cranky Kong. And let me warn ya, the lore for this show is really, really dense. Remember how in the original Donkey Kong Country, the story was that K. Rool took the banana horde and Donkey Kong was just so pissed he committed genocide to get them back? This show has a much deeper story surrounding the mystical object called the Crystal Coconut. So usually I would explain to you the lore of the Crystal Coconut so that you're all up to speed, but you know what? Cranky does a better job than I ever could. It all began with Captain Scurvy's great, great, great grandpappy. He stole the coconut, brought it to the island, la la la. Scurvy scum swindled that he was, etc., etc. He stashed it in the eye of Inca Dinka. Coconut popped out, la la la. DK found it, yada yada yada. Dean future ruler of Congo Bongo. The end. Congratulations, you're up to speed. Donkey Kong realizes he needs to learn a lot more about the Crystal Coconut in order to become the next ruler of Congo Bongo Island. So he goes to Inka Dinka Doo to see what he can learn. You bet it has. I want some info. I want to know the secrets that the crystal holds and all the magic power that it brings. I'm the big Kahuna. I should know. Oh, I'm sorry, did I forget to mention that this TV show is a musical? Because the entire thing is a musical. When you're watching this for the first time, no matter what you're expecting, I guarantee it wasn't that. The way the music swells in and then DK starts singing with this amazingly beautiful voice, to having him look at the camera, raising his eyebrows, like, yeah, this is the real deal. It is so surreal that that little segment alone is the reason this video got made. Hey, that's the name of the show. And I mean this in the most sincere way. Almost every one of these songs is a banger. For a dumb show that isn't the most well-written, the songs are all catchy and the artists are legitimately fantastic. Give up my autograph picture of my idol King Kong. So Inka Dinka Doo gives DK the advice of To know everything, you must give up. Everything. And that leads to Donkey Kong thinking that to understand the Crystal Coconut, he has to give it away. And who better than the undisputed heavyweight king, K. Rule? Victory, success. King K. Rule wins. I know I also said this in the Bubsy episode of this got made a few years ago, but K. Rule just kind of reminds me of Robotnik from the Deke cartoons. In the games, K. Rule was this terrifying crocodile with a bloodshot eye towering over everyone that wanted nothing but to kill Donkey Kong. But here, he's such a goof! Didn't I say no news, no calls, no 
villainy until tomorrow, it's a bad villain day! But he isn't the only evil reptile of the show. Arr, <laughs> Congo Bongo Island. I've come to claim me birthright, the crystal coconut, in the name of me great, great, great grandpappy! My father said to me, Ireland, a dear and learned some pirate history. A once a fearsome pirate ruled the seven seas. He was your great, great, great grandpappy, Quint Scurvy. I'll make you swap the deck and then I'll throw you in the brig. I swear I'll make you walk the plank to right the wrong you did. The day you mess with scurvy, I wish you'll ever mourn. When the coconut is mine, then you'll feel this pirate's scorn. It's a shame that Captain Scurvy was never brought into the games. He is the descendant of the pirate that brought the crystal coconut to Congo Bongo, and he has some of the catchiest songs in the entire special. They're so good that this song wasn't a part of the episode originally. It was taken from a different episode and randomly spliced in here so that we could jam out to it. After delivering the crystal coconut to K. Rule's minions, DK tells Cranky what he did just when Scurvy bursts in looking for the thing. And you know the thing that weirds me out the most? He has nipples. Like, there are only two people in the entire show that have visible nipples, and they are Scurvy and Clump, and I'm pretty sure they use the base model with different props and textures. Literally, no one else on this show has nipples, and CGI back in the 90s was really, really hard, so they must have been important. Well anyway, our nipple general gives K. Rule the crystal coconut, but K. Rule thinks it's a trap and makes them give it back to DK. This starts a mad dash that leads to another song. We gotta give the coconut back or else Pink Roll is gonna have our hides I can't believe I gave the crystal coconut to a couple of the bad guys Sadly, visually, it's kind of boring because it's just looped animation for the entirety of it. I find it interesting that DK is the only one with a different singing voice. Everyone else's voice actors are just doing their best to stay in character while singing, but then it cuts to DK's beautiful voice done by Sterling Jarvis, then you just go, they must have had a small budget. The biggest problem I've learned about this show is that the episodes are just too long. These are relatively simple stories stretched out over the course of a full 22 minute episode. The whole idea is that everyone thinks they're one step ahead of everyone else when they're actually no step steps ahead because everyone is just so stupid. It drags on for so long that even the characters give up. Congo Bongo Island family heirloom, me yada yada yada, claim me birthright, great great grandpappy, pity the landlubber shark babe, what stops me? Yada 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 yada. What was the next part? It drags on even longer by doing terrible slapstick, looping the same animation of Diddy jumping on a barrel and then T-posing these characters in the air. Diddy takes the coconut to Inca Dinka's place, the pirates get there, Donkey Kong knocks out Scurvy's tooth, gets the coconut back, end of first episode. But the important thing was, they all ended up empty-handed. The crystal coconut was safe. Or so we thought. Like I said, this was four episodes masquerading as a single movie. In between episodes, they had the voice actor for DK say a quick monologue that pretty much always amounts to If you thought that was crazy, check this out! Little warrior to big warrior, come in, over. I can hear you loud and clear, little buddy. Not little buddy, little warrior. Being a YouTuber is hard. Anyway, Diddy and DK are playing secret agents in the forest until they find a stock model the animators found in the library and K. Rule's minions steal one of their phones. As a practical joke, they pretend to make the thing sound irresistible. You mean the one that is even more magical than the crystal coconut? <laughs> More magical than the crystal coconut? Is every episode of this show based around somebody being an absolute moron? How many times have I told you not to play practical jokes? We were just having some fun. Every ape with a brain knows that's the amulet of Bugaboogie. Huh? Yup. So after Donkey and Diddy fall for Cranky's own practical joke, we zoom into the crystal coconut to see what the pirates are up to. And what's that I hear? If you ask me mother, she'll say, ah, he's not so bad. But when I left the house, I took everything she had. I took her silver and her gold and scuffed her wind pan. I even took her aprons and her cover pots and pans. Lying, looting, stealing is the reason I'm a pirate. Ransacking, pillaging, do not get till you try it. Blundering and pilfering, make up a healthy diet. Ah, look at me, I'm doing the booty boogie. 
These pirate songs are the absolute best things in this special. They are such bangers, they come out of nowhere every time, and this one is supposed to be a part of this episode. I want sea shanty versions of these, and the episode doesn't even really focus on them. It cuts right after the song's done to see what K. Rule's goons are doing. Hip -hop, hip -hop, company. Oh. Russia. Haven't you found Donkey Kong yet? Uh, almost. Uh. Where are these cameras? How are they communicating? This isn't a phone. This is just some screen this guy happened to walk by. Could you imagine that? Just having a camera capture your... every... move? I'm gonna... I'm gonna go. No. No, no, no. I'm in hell, aren't I? So Cranky is watching DK and Diddy be idiots through the Crystal Coconut and Funky walks in. So obviously they forgot to update the VHS with this. Okay. What goes around comes around. You better flex a move to correct or I'm betting you are regretting. You did it to yourself. You did it to yourself. So Cranky doesn't realize the banana phone is on and K. Rule overhears him talking about the worthless amulet. I love K. Rule. Half of the reason he's my main in Smash is because of this show. I mean, just look at the way he's animated. <laughs> So the pirate song was actually the show's way of telling us that the pirates were on the island. Everything about them just feels out of left field. It's part of the reason they're so great. I gotta tell you dudes, you are riding some serious negative waves. But you're in luck. I have cosmic jurisdiction to assign mantras. But before I can do that, you dudes will need a major cosmic cleansing and total clearing of the chakras. You did it to yourself! So the pirates steal the coconut, they give the barrel an all-new funky mode, and Donkey Kong has another excuse to let us hear his beautiful pipes. No, I didn't! I know what I saw. In the forbidden forest lurks a monster and you see how my childhood curiosity got the best of me. Despite the leaps of technical innovation this show actually takes, you can tell how constrained the budget was. Like if you look at that last shot. Did you catch it? They didn't animate that clip for long enough so they cut a part of it and reversed it so they had enough time for a fade. It may come off as a rookie mistake, but 3D animation in the 90s was expensive. So Cranky tells them what's going on, and when they figure it out, Diddy's hat comes flying and lands back on his head. I honestly can't tell if that was a glitch in the animation, or if the artist just went, <laughs> DEADLINES! <laughs> Diddy and DK get back, they see the place ransacked, then they steal Funky's plane to get to the ship on time. Afterward, K. Rule goes to Cranky's house to steal the coconut, but Funky tells them that it's already been stolen. Again, this story just feels too slow for how simple it wants to be. Who would have thought that my biggest complaint was that there's too much story in the Donkey Kong show? <laughs> it just takes too long for individual beats to happen. You could have cut the episode into a tight 11 minutes and it would have worked out better. So K. Rule does another lie through the banana phone, Scurvy believes it, DK barely misses them and goes back into the forest. Give it over! I would, but your hands are full. Allow me to relieve you of the hand cap. Oh, why, thank you, mate. All right, you uneducated piece of vermin. Little known fact, this is actually the origin of his neutral special. DK and Diddy scare the pirates in K. Rule. K. Rule falls into quicksand, and I swear I've had a nightmare of this shot. They get home, everything works out. This thing was funkies the whole time. Like I said, this show's too long. <laughs> Don't you get it? <laughs> now the joke's on us! <laughs> I'm with DK here. I don't get it. The only joke I have is the fact that we're only halfway through. So the next episode begins, DK slips on a banana peel and falls so hard his arm clips through the floor. Why is every single Nintendo show from the 90s so cheap? Mario didn't animate faces or backgrounds, DK loses an arm, oh, and his memory. Ooh, that Donkey Kong? 
Is there some sort of rule that says boyfriends always have to be late? Is that Candy Kong? Candy was always such a weird character. Like every game wanted to make her as sexy as was allowed with an E, and I'm sure it's part of the reason why furries exist, but here she's just entirely different. She just looks like she's an anti-vaxxer stuck in a bitter marriage with a husband who she wants dead and four kids that drive her crazy. That big ape might not know it, but he's in big trouble. Oh my god, the pirates are back! Don't know who ye be. You see, I got bumped in the head and now, mm, who am I? Your Donkey Croc! Huh? Hey, Donkey Croc! Be own first mate! Donkey Croc? I'm a pirate? What? No song? That's disappointing. He must have wandered off! Fine, fuck it! You sure I'm not some kind of monkey? Oh, yeah. You be as croc as they come, Donkey Croc! Here, seize for yourself! Do you hear that? Arr, feast your eyes! Look into the mirror, or it never lies! You're a pirate, can't you see that this is no disguise? You live to loot and pillage, beam and terrorize! There we go, and this time we also get DK's beautiful voice. It is literal perfection. How can this be? I think they recall swinging tree to tree. Now I see a pirate that's in front of me. With slimy skin and beady eyes, what a surprise. The reflection tells the story of a pirate's life of glory. Trust my eye. The mirror never lies. That's not how mirrors work. So Funky and Diddy find the pirate's boat and goes to the war and Cranky, while DK steals everything that he can from everyone. I have no idea how I was able to watch this so many times as a kid. All you're doing really is waiting for the next song to Oh, that's probably why. So DK meets up with K. Rule while sent on a wild goose chase and- Your donkey rule. Yeah, I'm with you there. They're just- Doing the beginning of the episode again. He meets a villain and they sing to convince him that he's a bad guy. Wait a minute, K. Rool sings? Well, listen here, what I make it clear. I can't believe you can't see what we see here. A crocodile, a superior species. I really don't like K. Rool's singing voice. Like, Scurvy's isn't the best either, but it's entertaining and it fits the songs. This just seems like he's straight up screaming. DK has the voice of an angel, but this is all just so repetitive. So K. Rool sends DK to get the crystal coconut, and on the way, Diddy and Funky try to get him to remember who he is. Before you take another step, I want you to try to remember the time we were trapped together in those barrels. The third banana. So Diddy, Funky, and Cranky try to make DK remember who he is by doing a clip show. I already have a problem with clip show episodes because they just come off as a way to pad out your runtime without actually having to put in much effort. And that is a huge problem with this show that already has a padding problem. And honestly, this would work as an advertisement for the show if it were previews of episodes. But nowhere on this VHS tape do they say that this is a TV show. No, seriously, I watched this VHS tape a lot growing up, but it took me until I was in college to learn that this was actually a full TV show. This just presents itself as a shitty movie and calls it a day. None of the clips work, so Cranky resorts to making Donkey Kong remember through his Conky Dong. Surely you must remember your old sweetie pie. Forget my old sweetie pie. Who are you? I am your old sweetie pie, you... you big banana for Whoa. brains! It seems today that all you see is violence in movies and sex on TV. So DK fixes everything, K. Rule and Scurvy lose their mind, and... <laughs> it took a few days, but Karul and Scurvy finally got their memories back. Oh, they fuck! And so we finally get to the last episode of this movie. Frankie is just hanging out until Scurvy bursts in, as we've shown is just normal, and the both of them just have a really weird conversation giving the context of the movie. Hand over the crystal coconut. Scurvy? Captain Scurvy, you dim with it, Simeon! <laughs> I'm back. But you're stranded on a desert island! You're lost at sea! You, you, you were chomped by sharks! <laughs> We've come back to get what's rightfully mine. We? 
Why are they acting like they've never met each other? We are an hour into this movie where Scurvy has been one of the main antagonists, and now we get a proper introduction? And he has a bird? What's going on? Something just seems off. Was this here before? I'm thirsty. Anyway, after DK thwarts the pirates' plans, it's K. Rule's turn because that's the only story this show can do, apparently. The whole movie is four episodes and each one has the same basic story. It gets so repetitive. Something I do love about this show is you can see how cheap they can be. As I'm sure you've noticed, so many of the characters are just reused models of different characters. Clump and Scurvy have the same model, Cutlass and K. Rule have the same model, and DK's like five different people, including Candy's boss, Bluster Kong. Shall I give you a hint? No. I will anyway. Bluster is every single frat boy. What? Ah! Karul! You're the master! <laughs> the poobah! <laughs> what's mine is yours? What's hers is yours? What's yours is yours? Bluster is every single frat pledge. So here's where I get confused with the story of this episode. So K. Rule takes over the barrel factory because he has the crystal coconut, but he never uses the crystal coconut to do it. He just takes over the factory because he has guns. So it just begs the question, what the hell does this thing do? Like, it astrally projects cranky places, it somehow heals Diddy's finger. Hell, the first episode of this movie was DK trying to figure out what the hell was so special about it. So what the hell is so special about it? And what's K. Rule's overall plan here? He wants to convert the barrels into bombs to stockpile them in an arsenal against the Kongs, but he doesn't actually stockpile them, he just constantly blows them up. What are you doing? You won! You won! In fact, what are you guys doing? K. Rule had the time to take over the factory and reset it to start making WMDs, but y'all have just moped around in your retirement condo the whole time? So the Kongs hear the explosions and DK has war flashbacks. Barrel bombs. Wait, was that the plan? To blow the whole thing up as a diversionary tactic to get away? You got away! You had the coconut! You exploding the barrels brought DK to you! And now your plan was to blow them up as a diversion to go into the mines? So one roller coaster tycoon later, Bluster gets one of their guns and holds the lizards at gunpoint, and they... surrender? But you have the coconut! You have the ultimate power! Use it! I guess! Get this. So after returning to Cranky's, the pirates steal the coconut because, of course, and now they track the pirates to the ship. Again, why weren't these two separate episodes? We're heading out. All aircraft report. Whoa, I'm out of here! So our heroes get captured and... Wait a minute, I, I know that clip. That's what they showed DK in the last episode to try to get him to remember who he was. And you know what? That mixed with the weird way that everybody kind of knows Scurvy makes me think that this episode actually takes place before everything else in the movie. So why didn't you edit out that clip in the last episode knowing you were going to put it in this episode after it? And I know you guys know how to edit shit out because you know that first pirate song? Yeah, it's from this episode. If you're gonna make us rewatch something from this movie, then make it one of the songs because now we know how this action scene ends and in turn how the movie ends before even being introduced to the actual conflict of the episode. It just makes me really dizzy. And kind of makes my arm a little numb. And the blasphemy against my Lord Khan will not be taken lightly. In accordance to the laws of Hollow Earth, the antidote to this poison is in one of these bananas. Each wrong one will make the poison act faster. May the ruler of Congo Bongo have mercy on your soul. The third banana. That, that's it. It's the answer. I, I can save my own life. And with this note past me, we'll know which one to grab. I forgot how much I hate bananas. So we get the same clip from the flashbacks, but extended because it's the actual episode that it's from. A claptrap has no teeth and a key and he just sings. Stop. 
of a pirate ship. I am a boat filled with gold and so hip. Listen, we have about five minutes left and I want to eat dinner. He lets them out, DK gets a taste for blood, and the rest of the clips from last episode plays. And now with Donkey Kong out of my way, nothing can stop me. Claptrap eats the entire ship, everything works out, roll credits. Thanks Paramount, you gave us the Sonic movie and the DK movie. This was, uh... something? Legend of the Crystal Coconut is an incoherent, lazy excuse of a movie that is just strung together with little care. It is way too long for this sort of straight-to-DVD taste of the show, but I think that has more to do with the individual episodes themselves. If the whole package was only like 45 minutes to an hour with a lot of the fat cut out from each episode, it could have been something fun. But because of its length, what was once fun and charming becomes grating and slow. But again, the music's just incredible. If you liked the movie, then you're in luck because the show has 40 episodes total and you only watched a tenth of it with this movie. Each episode has two songs, so there's more content to consume. Personally, I got tired of it after the first episode, but this whole thing isn't without merit. And I want to thank you guys for coming along on this weird journey with me. If you like what you had to see, then please subscribe or check out some of my other videos. I'm just a little confused right now because I feel like I'm forgetting something, and I'm also very, very dizzy and I'm scared that those are related? Oh. I did forget something. When I was a young lad my father said to me Land and ear, learn some pirate history once a fearsome pirate ruled the seven seas, he was your great-great-great-grandpappy Quint Scurvy.